Who has been the most ridiculous person of the week? In at number three this week, it's KFC, the finger-licking good chain which had operational issues that's left its binges lacking food. The hardships that this caused were real. One woman ranted on ITV News that she'd had to go to Burger King. Meanwhile, KFC apologised but said that they weren't going to compromise on quality. So the next time that you have a bucket of warehouse stored deep fried chicken, remember they haven't compromised. In at number two this week, it is Republican lawmakers in Florida who were nominated by our follower Martin Turner. Now they decided this week to make pornography a public health risk, literally hours after they decided that it wasn't their job to consider a ban on assault rifles. Republicans seem a little bit confused about which tool they should use when, so here's a quick handy guide. If you want to save kids from the evils of being shot in school, that's when you need legislation. If you want to save kids from the evils of masturbation, then that's when you need thoughts and prayers. And in at number one this week, it is literally everybody involved in the Jeremy Corbyn spying story. There's a lot of people to get through, so let's start with the right-wing press. Now, let's be clear. A former Czech spy claiming that he met Corbyn in the 80s and recruited him as an informant is a story of interest and does need to be investigated. And if true, it's massive. There's just one small problem. It was bollocks. Firstly, the witness was a little bit zany. He claimed to have personally organised Live Aid, so you know, it's the classic Marxist strategy. One, organise an international benefit concert to stop world hunger. Two, hire a fringe Labour backbencher to spy on the Thatcher cabinet. And three, Marxist utopia happens somehow. And then Czech authorities largely discredited the claims. And whilst the press continued to try to make a mountain out of a molehill, Tories started getting involved, including MP Ben Bradley, who claimed that Corbyn had sold national secrets, a claim for which he had no evidence. Largely because how could there be any evidence? After all, what secrets could Corbyn possibly have sold? But then, enter Jeremy Corbyn. Now, if he thinks the press have published outright lies about him, he could sue. But he hasn't decided to do that. He's decided to threaten them by saying, change is coming. Now, many people will say, about time too, and I wish to God that the press hadn't been such imbeciles this week. But powerful people threatening the press is concerning. On this blog, we've continually taken the mickey out of people for making vague threats against the press because they publish stories that displease them. The sad thing is that this week, it's not Donald Trump. <laughs>